Ever find yourself getting bored of modern Formula One? Well, luckily, with mods in a Settle Corsa, we can travel through time to a range of more exciting eras in the sport, including the absolute madness of the early 1970s. And we've landed in Pedro Rodriguez's BRM at the 1970 Belgian Grand Prix, a race the Mexican would go on to win. And immediately you get an overwhelming sense of the dangers faced by drivers during this era as we thunder through the Belgian countryside in this classic version of the spa francorchamps circuit. In fact, with modern eyes and sensibilities, it's scarcely believable that races like this were ever run. Take a look at how feeble any of the safety infrastructure is, how close to ditches, fences, farm animals, houses and spectators we are, and how unbelievably powerful but exposed this generation of Formula One cars were. Speaking of the car, this mod from Racing Studios is fantastic. It may only have 450 brake horsepower, but it absolutely packs a punch and of course lacks almost all of the modern aerodynamic bells and whistles. The model itself is beautifully realised and comes in two variations. You can have an absolutely awesome time ripping through classic tracks in this car. It shines most in high speed sections like this, much like the mid 80s generation of F1 cars too, as we fly forward through time by over 15 years to the 1986 Belgian Grand Prix and the cockpit of Alan Prost. Spa has obviously undergone significant modernisation and more closely resembles the current circuit layout, but of anything, this generation of F1 cars is even more challenging to drive. It packs a ridiculous 1000 brake horsepower while weighing just 610 kilograms, meaning in the lower gears the car can massively struggle for traction. The car is more aerodynamically sophisticated, but still nowhere near the extent of the current generation of F1 cars. And while you have more grip through high speed corners, the big win here is the cars are massively lighter than modern Formula 1 machinery and the chassis itself is much smaller. This means the car is more nimble and my feeling is it also promotes better racing too. Now Alan Prost would go on to win the 1986 World Championship and we can now hop from one McLaren World Champion to another as our sim racing TARDIS lands in the year 2000 in the cockpit of Mika Hakkinen. The pattern of F1 regulation changes being geared towards slowing cars down and improving safety is well in swing by this period, so the car has lost a couple of hundred brake horsepower and there's been some significant safety enhancements to the chassis themselves. But in no way does that make these cars any less exciting to drive, in fact it's quite the opposite. The car remains light and nimble compared to modern F1, they're hugely tricky to manage in lower gears and frighteningly powerful through high speed sections. Once again the mod itself is brilliant, the audio on the V10 engine is ear splitting, there's a bunch of visual customization options in terms of front and rear wings, LCD display colours and adjustable nose cameras, it's well, well worth spending some time with. But now it's time to leap forward again to the 2013 championship winning cockpit of Sebastian Vettel. And even though it's not the most aesthetically pleasing generation of cars with their skinny rear wings, and even though as an F1 fan I was really bored of Red Bull winning by this point, I think it might be my favourite of the historical cars featured in this video. It sounds great, it handles wonderfully, it feels far less like it's trying to chuck you into the barriers at every opportunity, but it's still more raw and exciting than the latest generation of cars tend to feel, and it provides better racing as a result. Vettel of course was a winning machine during this period, and on his way to championship success that year, he would also win the 2013 Belgian Grand Prix, head of championship rival Fernando Alonso. And that's really the fun of these mods and combinations for me, not painstakingly recreating the real life races, but relatively easily being able to get an authentic enough experience of them. Obviously a set of Corsa lacks some of the functionality you'd need to rerun a full championship season, but these snapshots of F1 history are awesome nonetheless. But wait, my time travelling TARDIS appears to have malfunctioned, where on earth have I arrived? Well, to find out, you'll need to click on the video on screen now.